here in the C-Space studio. I am James Kotecki here with Jacqueline Corbelli. She's the co-founder and CEO of Brightline, a company that powers interactive TV for advertisers and helps them make magic with it. Is that right? Perfectly said. All right. Perfectly well put. Awesome. So what do marketers need to know in 2017 about advertising on connected television? I mean, they need to know how quickly adoption is taking place. Um, and that um, as content becomes more watchable on more screens, right, um, that the longer it takes for them to catch up from an advertising standpoint, the more effectiveness they're leaving on the table. And um, we watched a, a very considerable uptick in the pace um, of network broadcast and cable networks coming into the connected TV space through their own apps. Right? Um, it was just a tremendous uh, shift. Um, and so advertisers, more than anything else, need to be aware that there is a lot available to them that up till now just didn't exist. So give me some examples of some of the things that you're excited about or some of the yeah. things that you're steering your clients toward. If I have a TV, and yeah. we're talking about, are we typically talking about TVs and living rooms, first of all, just paint me the picture, or is, is there a connected TV on my laptop right here? Yeah, I mean, the TV is less about the device than it is about the TV experience from our perspective. It's about premium content, first and foremost. The reality is that it's primarily watched on a TV in the living room, right? Um, but it's also about mobility and, you know, convenience, right? Well, let me ask you one more question then. What is TV? Yes. I mean, is it is TV defined by the length of the show? Uh, by Obviously, it's not. we just said it's not defined by the device where you see it. I mean, TV is defined, I think, by the quality and type of content that you're, video content that you're watching, right? Um, so, so not cat videos, necessarily. Yeah, okay. I mean, look, I didn't want to go there, but <laughs> yes, that's exactly right. Okay. You know, everyone who was doing what we used to call linear broadcast television back in the day is still at it in this connected environment, putting the content out there in a way that seems natural to the fo all of us who are on our mobile phones and desktops. So let's talk about what marketers need to know yeah. to be in this space and what you're excited about for 2017. I mean, look, the most exciting thing about connected TV right now is there is a way to get past pure 30 passive seconds of, of branding, right, to something more meaningful to the viewer in 76% of all homes, right? Um, connected TV hit critical mass this past year. It's in 76% of homes. 25% um, of all of the TV content being watched is actually being watched through a connected television, right? So just about every major network um, is providing advertisers with an at-scale opportunity, right, to enhance their ads in some way, whether it's interactivity or dynamic targeting. Um, we, there's these things we call engageable overlays, which just allows you to sort of sit inside a 30-second spot and with BMW use a color changer as you're watching those 30 seconds. See your, your favorite color on the car, et cetera. So it's good stuff. It's exciting for brands. Is the holy grail for you guys and your clients to create content that just does not feel like advertising? It feels yeah. more like a game or an experience? I mean, I think that's what we all want as viewers, right? I mean, I th to be honest with you, I think it's almost impossible to create an ad that on some level you're not recognizing as advertising. That said, um, there are ways to make it less disruptive and more meaningful, and that's what we focus on. Do you have any favorite examples that you've seen in the last year that you're preparing for 2017? Oh my gosh, we have so many great examples. Um, I'm often astounded at how well um, CPG brands like Hellman's, for example, do in this new environment Consumer where, products. yeah, it's unbelievable. You know, I mean, we all love recipes, and so I think we we tend to see much higher interaction rates um, and engagement times on the television um, than um, exist in the mobile and web world, right? So where mobile and web get a 0.1 percent click through, we're in the two and three percent. Um, range on click through, six percent interaction rates, um, and you know, at the at the far end of that spectrum are brands actually like Hellman's who offer recipes to download, for example, um, and or um, cooking videos, right? And uh, people, as it turns out, really want to know all the different ways to use Hellman's mayonnaise. <laughs> I know I do. <laughs> um, how, how Makes a hell of a chocolate cake. I did not think of that. Yeah. All right. We're learning things right now. Yeah. This is good information. The How much more connected can or should connect to TV get? I mean, are we talking about ads that follow me around when I'm in my living room, I'm, and I, but then like they follow me around to my Facebook feed, for example, and it kind of 
it's, it's connected TV is then connected to other types of advertising? Look, I think, you know, look, here's the thing. You get someone who is really digitally minded, right? You know, anybody who's in the, been in the web world for the last 15, 20 years, um, and they're gonna say, absolutely, that's where it should go. As a person who's been at this for 14 years and seeing convergence just happen now, right? TV and the, and the uh, desktop coming together for the first time, right? I can tell you that that stuff is where it should go theoretically. Um, but right now, it really looks like native um, experiences inside um, content that you love where it, the data may be pointing you to different directions, but you as a consumer don't feel pushed around, right? Um, you feel like there's a one-to-one, -one, almost a one-to-one -one connection of personalization yeah. in the ad, right? That's what we see happening. Okay. Um, are there any uh, things that, I mean, I assume that data, as you just mentioned, is a huge part of what yeah. you're doing. And, and I assume a huge part of this is, is the ability to collect data from the people that are consuming and watching these ads. Is that, is that how you I mean, see look, it? Look, it's, it's data, right? Data, data, data. Yeah. Uh, everyone's looking for more and more data. Um, look, I've been at the data game for a very long time, and the reality is that the data is only as useful as the insights you're able to apply real time. Um, and you know, right now there's a there is a a, a real push to understand attribution, right? Yep. What media are really working? And I think data is is it's not tomorrow. Unfortunately, it's not tomorrow that I could be watching something on my laptop, you know, searching for something, and I'm automatically going to see something that's related to that on my television, etc. Oh, yeah. It's not here yet. But is that where it's going? Absolutely, without a doubt. Do you find anything? counterintuitive in the data that you have about people's uh, viewing habits or the kinds of content or advertising they like to consume? I mean, it's counterintuitive to think that people will actually engage in an ad for six and seven minutes at a time, right? Um, and yet we do see that. Um, the engagement rates are that high when you're colorizing or, you know, creating, doing, you know, animation on, a car, on cars, for example. Things that you video, right? If um, there's behind the scenes video or um, it's a studio ad and there's not only behind the scenes but there's outtakes, right? And there's uh, you know six or seven trailers. You're sitting in those experiences for seven, eight, ten minutes at a time. To me, it's counterintuitive until you sort of experience it and say, oh yeah, why not, right? It's better than what I could have been using those ten minutes on otherwise, <laughs> right? What, what, I don't know if this is you guys, but one thing that I've kind of found puzzling is when you are trying to watch a movie trailer, yeah. and they play a 30-second spot before it, yes. and I'm like, you're making me watch an ad so yeah. that I can watch another ad that I chose to proactively watch. That's right. Isn't it interesting? I think I remember being outraged by those ads, and now it's just become part of the expectation, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and I really think that, that that says a lot about what isn't going to change about the world that we're in, which is there's such a tremendous amount of video content out there, high quality video content, um, and it's not sustainable without the ad model, right? And so for the ad model to evolve is, is really part and parcel of sustaining the high quality of content from, from my perspective. There's more than you can shake a stick out there right now. And discovery is becoming a big deal, right? How do you find the best shows anymore? Absolutely. Uh, as we start to wrap up, I mean, there's 160, 170,000 people here at CES. What's something that they all need to know, but they're not really getting yet? I mean, look, I, I have a very specific lens, and I think um, in, in many of the conversations that I've been in, it is, it is a part of all of our natural behavior to be watching Hulu or Netflix. And when you ask the question about connected TV, there is not enough connection, if you will, between, you no know, TV is streaming, right? Um, and once you sort of, that clicks, right, it, you start to think about everything very differently. And I, I would say that that was sort of the biggest aha I'm watching on people's faces this year. All right. Jacqueline Corbelli is the CEO and co-founder of Brightline. Thank you so much for joining me here in the C-Space studio today. It's a pleasure. Thank you. I'm James Kotecki. Keep it locked right here for more great content from the C-Space studio.